Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to my channel. And today we are going to discuss about a very important topic called as perineum. Before going to explore this, please subscribe to my channel. And today we are going to just have a brief idea on this perineum. And what we are going to discuss is where it is located, what are the sub triangles, and what is the shape of it, and what are the contents of it we are going to discuss. So in the next class, we are going to see the two different triangles. One is eurozenital triangle, another one is anal triangle. We are going to discuss later. So what is this perineum? So the perineum is an approximately diamond-shaped region that lies below the levator ani, between the inner aspects of the thighs and anterior to the sacrum coxae. So it is a diamond-shaped part which is exactly present at the pelvic outlet. So, we have the pelvic inlet, pelvic cavity, and pelvic outlet. Let me show you that. In this picture, we can identify the bony pelvis. In the bony pelvis, right and left hip bones, they are articulating with each other anteriorly, strictly speaking at the pubic bones. The pubic bones are the parts of the hip bone, and these two pubic bones anteriorly they are articulating with each other and they form the secondary cartilaginous joint. And posteriorly, right and left hip bones they are articulating with the sacrum and form sacroiliac joint. Sacroiliac joint. And anti this bony pelvis, it is going to divide into two parts: pelvic, the greater pelvis and the lesser pelvis. So how these two pelvis are divided? So here. There is an arcuate line or linear terminalis which is extending from the sacral promontory that is anterior margin of the first sacral vertebra that is called as sacral promontory. And this linear terminalis or arcuate line or pelvic brim which is extending from posterior to anterior. First it is present at the sacral promontory, then it is running anterior to the all of the sacrum. These two butterfly wings, wings like structures called as all of the sacrum. This line is extending anterior to the all of the sacrum. Then it is running on the inner surface of the ilium. Then it is extending anteriorly through this iliopubic eminence. Then it is extending at the superior margin of pubic bones. There we can identify the pectin pubis. And then it is reaching to the further anteriorly, reaches to the pubic crest and it reaches to the upper end of the pubic symphysis. So this is how the arcuate line which is extending. And this arcuate line, which is separating the bony pelvis into two parts, upper part is called as greater pelvis or false pelvis, lower part is called as true pelvis or the lesser pelvis. Okay. So, what we are going to discuss is the between the greater pelvis and the lesser pelvis, you can identify this arcuate line. Through this, we can identify there is an inlet. So, this is called as inlet of the Bony pelvis. Let me show you the pelvic outlet. When you just turn it upside down, then we can identify the pelvic outlet. In this picture, we can identify the pelvic outline outlet, which is present at the inferior aspect or projecting inferiorly in anatomical position. So, in this pelvic outlet, where we can identify this region called as perineum. perineum. So, perineum is a diamond shaped part, diamond shaped part which is present behind the pubic bones and medial to this ischiopubic ramus and the ischial tuberosities and anterior to the sacrum and the coxae and anterior to the sacrotuberous ligaments which are extending from the sacrum to the ischial tuberosities. Then, the perineum is the lowest region of the trunk below the pelvic diaphragm. It includes all the structures that fill the pelvic outlet. The perineal body in the female, however, it is called as gynecological perineum. Gynecological perineum. So in this uh, female pelvis section, what we can identify, this is the view as, we can call it as inferior view. Okay, we are just observing from the inferior aspect so that we can identify in the female perineum anterior to posterior we can identify urethral orifice 
Bazaine or orifice and the anal orifice. So, three orifices which we can identify in the female pelvis. This is urethral, vaginal orifice, and anal orifice. And the perineum is traversed by the urethra and anal canal in the case of male, as we have discussed earlier. In the female, we can identify urethral orifice most anteriorly, behind that is vaginal orifice, and most posteriorly, anal orifice is present in the case of females. So, this is the female pelvis and female perineum we can identify anterior urethral, vaginal orifice, and anal orifice. So, this perineum is bounded anteriorly by the pubic symphysis and its arcuate ligament, posteriorly by the coxae and the anterior laterally by the ischio pubic ramus and the ischial tuberosities, and posterior laterally by the sacro tuberous ligaments. So let us see the boundaries from anterior to posterior. So anteriorly we can identify the pubic symphysis, anterior laterally we can identify ischial pubic ramus, and laterally we can identify the ischial tuberosities, and posterior laterally we can identify the sacro tuberous ligament which is extending from the sacrum to the ischial tuberosities, and most posteriorly we can identify the sacrum of the coxae. In this picture, you can identify the sacrotuberous ligaments which are forming the posterolateral bones of the perineum. Then the deep limit of the perineum and the superficial limit of the perineum. What is this superficial limit and the deep limit? So the fascia which are present here in this perineum, they are separating this perineum into two different chambers. So the upper chamber is called as deep perineal pouch. So the lower chamber is called as superficial perineal pouch. So the superficial perineal pouch which is facing downwards and which we can uh, see inferiorly, then above it we can identify this deep perineal pouch which is present above the superficial perineal pouch. So, in this picture, we can identify the deep limit. What are the structures are present in the deep limit? So, in the deep limit, we can identify or deep perineal pouch, you can identify the sphincter urethrae, sphincter urethrae, and also the uh, supports of this uterus and supports of the vaginal walls, and also the supports of the rectum and anal canal. And this is the superior view of the perineum, superior view of the perineum in the case of female. And this entire this muscle fibers they are forming the pelvic diaphragm, and we can call them as levator ani muscle fibers, which are forming the pelvic diaphragm, and they are holding the important organs which are present in the pelvic cavity. And this is the inferior view of the female perineum. Then an arbitrary arbitrary line joining the ischial tuberosities that is called as inter ischial line that divides the perineum into two different triangles. So, as we have discussed earlier, so perineum is nothing but the diamond shaped part, diamond shaped part. Okay, we have seen the boundaries as well. When you separate this diamond shaped part into two different areas, we can get two triangles anterior and posterior. So, how we are dividing this perineum into two different triangles? We are drawing an line which is joining the two ischial tuberosities okay so that is called as arbitrary line which is joining the two ischial tuberosities that itself it is separating the perineum into two different triangles anterior triangle and the posterior triangle so this anterior triangle is called as urogenital triangle and the posterior triangle is called as anal triangle in this picture you can identify clearly this is urogenital triangle and this is anal triangle So, in the urogen, in the case of female pelvis, in the case of female pelvis, we can identify urethral orifice, vaginal orifice. These are present in the urogenital triangle. Anal triangle is present in the posterior triangle. Okay, posterior triangle is called as anal triangle. So, only anal orifice is 
the same in the case of males and females. But in the case of females, the urogenital triangulate is consisting of, in the case of males, only urethral orifice. But in the case of females, you can identify urethral orifice anteriorly, behind that one is the vaginal orifice. In the urogenital triangle faces downwards and forwards, whereas the anal triangle faces downwards and backwards at an approximate angle of 120 degrees from the plane of the urogenital triangle. Okay, so the urogenital triangle is facing downwards and forwards, whereas the anal triangle facing downwards and backwards. So in this picture, you can identify clearly. So this is the anatomical position of the bony pelvis. So how we have to call this bony pelvis in anatomical position means. So this anterior superiac spine and this pubic tubercle, they, these two points, they have to present at the same coronal plane. If you just draw a coronal plane by joining these two points, you have to keep or hold the bony pelvis in such a position. So in anatomical position, this urogenital triangle Eurocentral triangle facing forwards and downwards, okay, forwards and downwards, whereas the anal triangle is projecting backwards and downwards. So that is about the general idea of perineum. In the next class, we are going to discuss about the Eurocentral triangle, then after that, we are going to see the anal triangle. If you have any doubts, please uh, feel free to post under the comment box. Thank you, dear students. See you soon.